so uh, here's another um, video for class 20 and I'm gonna go through an example and I think it's gonna be fast enough that I'm gonna do the example I'm gonna introduce um, stress concentration for fatigue fatigue stress concentration and then I'm gonna do the example two so this will be example one the fatigue uh, stress concentration and fatigue uh, example two right which is really example one example two really just part one part two of the same example so we have this cold drawn 1030 51 millimeter bar um, diameter bar you know, um, which is rotating and it's loaded in completely reversed torsion right so it's twisting <laughs> twisting back and forth do I have my pool noodle there you go so I pull noodle right here so it's just like this right here right so we're going it's rotating, it's rotating, but it's also the torsion is twisting. I don't know how that's happening, but maybe it's, uh, it's, it's rotating, but the torsion, but the torsion is getting uh, completely reversed. Onto the thing. I don't even know, how, how would you even do that? I don't think about it. Ah, eh, whatever. Somehow it happens, right? It's, in, it's, it's pretend, pretend world. Okay, so we look up our material properties in table A20 in the back, and we get that the ultimate strength is 528 megapascals. And we find um, our endurance strength is 0.5 times that, or 260 megapascals. Then we use our surface uh, factor, right, surface condition factor. And if you're in the 10th uh, uh, edition and earlier, you take a multiplier A of 4.51 and B. And by the way, we should look look these up as we're going along. So I think I'm gonna go back and forth uh, between here. So I have to cancel out of this. That stinks. Is that true? No, I could do this. I could do this right here. I could go to um, uh, camera. There you go, camera. All right, so we can go back and forth uh, from, from this and Voila. Um, so this is in chapter six. So here we go. Here is where we would find um, for cold drawn, I believe, right? But you'll notice that the numbers are wrong. That's because they changed things for the eleventh edition. So uh, in the eleventh edition, we use three point oh four for a and a negative point uh, two one seven. So you can see, you kind of get the difference um, between what, what this, uh, what the effect of them updating that table is. So the size factor, um, right there for 51 um, millimeters, which uh, in the table right here, we'll note that that is uh, really the transition. So you could use either one of these equations right there, right? They should be right at 51. These should be the identical number. Um, so we get 0.8142 and the loading factor should be um, 0.59 because this is uh, in torsion right there right okay and the temperature factor they didn't tell us anything so we're assume it's one they didn't tell us anything but difference of reliability so we're going to assume one um, which means that it's, it's 50 percent reliable and miscellaneous factor, we're going to keep that as 1. So uh, here's the equation we're going to stick all of those into. And if we do that, we get uh, an endurance strength. And we call this the fully corrected endurance strength with bunny ears um, of 107.4. But of course, we have a different factor for if we use the 11th edition. So we have a slightly different answer. But let's see what the effect of that is going to be. So, um, in order to find this, um, in some in some books, some editions, you actually need to turn uh, that um, ultimate strength into uh, KSI if it's in megapascals. Um, but now in the this edition, uh, the eleventh edition, most recent one, we actually have an extra. They have that on the top right here. So they actually this is uh, they have right here. Right, so we had like a, a, what do you say, like 520 or something like that right there. Um, what do we say? We had yeah, 520. So we expect to be close to that 0.9, actually. Yeah. We could also, if we wanted to, use this equation right here. Right. 
right? So we have that option now to be able to use an equation to find f, which is pretty nice. So anyway, we take that and we're that we use that for the f times sut. So I actually just calculate the number. That's usually uh, going to be a little convenient because when we find this a and b, which remember is not the a and b that we just used a minute ago, right? These are different a's and b's. Um, but anyway, we use this, we get this value, 1979. But of course, we have a different endurance strength. So uh, from the 11th edition, this is what we would use for that A. And then B, we also, uh, we, we find this. And by the way, if we want those equations, where, where are those equations located? Let's make sure we uh, have that uh, here in your book. So here's your A, and here's your B that we're using. We're going to use it down into this equation here in a second. So there's the uh, um, that exponent, and we know this, we notice it's going to be different uh, because we have a different se in here. So here's what we're predicting, right? We're taking our um, repeated 150 megapascal torsional load, and we say 205,000 one hertz cycles. But let's just make that two sig figs, only two sig figs, because we don't want to imply a amount of certainty because this is a very very rough estimate. So. Um, and you could make the argument, shouldn't it be round down? Sure, why not? If you want to, I don't care. I mean, we're, we're really kind of, mm, maybe we should only use one sig fig, really. Yeah, but this is fine, it's good enough. Um, so just as an example, just kind of out of curiosity, like, all right, number of cycles, I don't know, I picked 1200 RPM, why? Just seemed like a good value to use. It's kind of a standard rotating speed, kind of in the in the middle of you know, in terms of motors or whatever. Like a, a, a typical fast motors, three three thousand six hundred, like thirty six hundred or right around there. It's actually a little because of slippage, a little bit lower, like thirty four seventy comes out to my mind. I think anyway, but anyway, that that's about it, right? So um, eighteen hundred is you know twelve hundred. I don't know, I picked it up, 171 minutes, because that makes a lot more sense to me, all right, to think about time instead of cycles. Um, noteworthy, if we use those other values for compare and contrast, um, it dipped down from 210 cycles to about 150,000 cycles. Hmm, interesting. All right, so now let's account for the fact that this thing maybe has like um, some discontinuity in it. Oh no, oh, here you go. I went ahead and plotted it on our SN diagram right here. So here's our SN diagram. Notably, here is that um, F times SUT was right here at that one knee. And here's our ultimate, um, oh, I actually on this one, I guess I have, well, maybe, maybe this was the 107 and it's just down that far. It might be, I think so. It looks like I just used 100. But anyway, um, yeah, oh, this is the 99.7, all right. It's from a previous one right there. I should have fixed it. But anyway, there is a cycle. So this other one, I had 140,000 cycles, but you get the idea. It was nice. It was a nice idea to make this graph like this, and then I changed the numbers. Okay, so let's talk about notch uh, stress concentration and notch sensitivity. So you recall that um, stress concentration, KT and KS, uh, we were able to get from um, figures in the book, right, from Peterson's uh, stress concentration. Here's a typical one, right, uh, for just having like a, a hole in a plate that's in tension. But now we're going to change it into um, st fatigue stress concentration. We're going to convert that T into an F, right? And uh, so now we're going to find the maximum stress modified, um, still multiplying that KF times the nominal stress, whether it be um, normal stress or shear. So what's the difference between them? And it's this thing called notch sensitivity, which is not, I don't, I think it's counterintuitive on a couple levels, but mostly just counterintuitive because I, the name of it, I think it should be notch insensitivity, right? So a material is not as sensitive to the notch as you would think, right? So what, because what it does is it reduces the stress concentration, right? So we'll get a KT, and this Q is something that's less than one. And uh, first we subtract out one from the stress concentration, multiply that Q, and then we add the one back to it, right? And we do the same either for the, uh, one that modifies the normal stress or one that does the shear. 
And here's where we get them from. Uh, from here, we had uh, either for bending an axial, we get our Q, and you can see it varies from zero to one up here. And not notably, we have this ultimate strength. We have lines of constant ultimate strength, and then we use the notch radius uh, right here. Right? And there's also notch radius in millimeters up at the top if you want to go that way. What I find interesting is that the weaker the thing is, right, the lower the ultimate strength, the less sensitive it is to the uh, to the notches, right? The notch sensitivity is a lower number, which is we can think of as notch insensitivity. So it's less and less sensitive. Uh, and this a low number here tends to reduce the stress concentration, is the idea. So um, I guess that makes sense. That the stronger, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, the stronger uh, thing ha is more prone to little cracks building up because of the notch. All right, I'll buy that. Um, all, but but counterintuitive, I think, here is that a, a small notch radius will make a small uh, uh, notch sensitivity. That is not kind of, that's not intuitive, I don't think. I, mm, no, it doesn't seem that way. So anyway, these um, are curve fit, and you can use these equations right here if you want to, but not on an exam. Just pull it off this uh, graph the best that you can. Notably, um, if the notch radius is greater than what's on here, all of these have a plateau, plateau to them. So if they happen to be 0.25 is the radius, right? Well, just take, and, and let's say it's 100 KSI is the ultimate strength. Well, then just use this line right here, which I say is probably right around 0.85, something like that, right? Um, I saw, I think it's interesting that uh, the cast iron's not sensitivity. It has like a really small notch sensitivity. I guess because it already has like pores and, and, and uh, um, uh, inclusions in, uh, in, in it, and uh, already its strength is kind of based on taking those things into uh, account. That's my words of wisdom there. I don't know. So let's continue with that same example, but now like modify it. So now it has uh, 51 millimeters transitioning to 102 millimeters with a notch uh, radius of uh, 2.5 millimeters, right? So let's see that the D over D that we would get from this, and let's take a look at that stress concentration that's in the book. Do, 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 do. So this is um, the type, this type of stress concentration, uh, once you remember it's torsion. So we're gonna use uh, this guy right here and it's transitioning from one diameter to another with a little fillet radius. And so we have a D over D and an R over D that we need. So the D over D is two. Picked that out on purpose. And the R over D is right around 0.49. Call it 0.5. I think it's supposed to be 0.049. I think it's supposed to be 0 0.049. Let's do that calculation right there. So I think that's wrong. 2.5 over 51. Yeah, 0 0.049. So uh, in order to fix that, pause. Magically, it's paused. Magically, it's fixed. I'm sorry. All right, so anyway, um, we look that up. And in here at 2 and close to uh, point. 0 0.05 and so there's 2 and 0 0.05 and what did I, I, I don't know I don't remember what I said that look okay here's 1.6 here's 1.8 1.7 I'm gonna say it's 1.75 pretty close let's see what I said 1.58 how did I do that how did I manage to get that wrong let me double check let me let me look at this again what did I do wrong oh boy yeah, I guess so. I don't know what I was looking at. No. Huh. 2 and 0 0.05. How did I get that wrong? Let me double check this. What did I do? Huh. 
previous uh, a version or something that was like I don't know what happened. All right. Um, anyway, uh, 0.75. Point, 1.75. Gee whiz. Okay. So um, we had that 1.75, and now we want to try uh, to get a um, modifying factor here. And hopefully uh, I did this one correctly. I'm now thinking I could have made a mistake here. Um, so we go to the stress concentration uh, notch uh, radius, not sensitivity. And let's see. Um, what was our ultimate strength here? Was something like um, 520. So here is one gigapascal. Here is points. So here's 700 megapascal. Here's 400. So it's somewhere in between these two. And our notch is 2.5. So it's somewhere up in here. All right. Now I was able to. Uh, for mine, use a, um, the equations, and I got 0.826. So applying that 0.826 to that 1.75, we've reduced the stress concentration to 1.62. And so we can multiply it by the nominal um, shear of 150, and I get 243. And then we can put it back into the um, equation that we had for the life prediction. And we're saying that's now going to be 20,850, right? So what did we drop it down to because of stress concentration? It was 200,000. Now it's 21,000, something like that. So that means like if it was that 1,200 RPM, that would be 17 minutes. Just the fact that it had this discontinuity in there. Um, if you're wondering about the 11th edition, the slight change to the endurance strength, uh, that makes it to like 17,000 cycles, which reduces it to like 14 minutes. So there you go. There's These were the um, uh, examples one and two, um, which are really the same example with uh, the stress concentration added in there. So um, at least I fixed the slides now. Now the slides. I don't know if I, I usually do it by hand, calculate stuff by hand instead of doing it by slots. But thank you, and here you go, posterity.